anyway, this is the first of a three-parter just to show you how I go about wallpapering my doll's house. The first thing I thought I'd show you was um, the glue I use. You can just use ordinary um, wallpaper glue that you'd buy anywhere, just the stuff that you use for your house. This is a, a cheap one from B&Q, wallpaper adhesive, cold water starch and obviously you mix it generally in a bucket a huge amount which of course gives you a slight problem when you only want to do a little bit for a doll's house if you look at the instructions here on the back we're talking about five pints and four and a half pints and i doubt that we want half a pint so i have used it i have scaled it down and mixed it up and i have used it but that's that's quite a big problem is scaling down the measurements trying to get it mixed up to the right consistency and the other problem with it is it's quite difficult to get it totally lump free it's generally okay but and you do spot the lumps if there are any but basically i find that a bit of a nuisance to use there is a doll's house wallpaper adhesive which i'm sure is absolutely great it comes in small parts um for my sort of budget quite a pricey way of doing it so I, I actually haven't used it but I bet you it, it's terrific to use and both of those will give you this sort of slip slidiness that you perhaps want with wallpaper you want to be able to push it about a bit and I understand if people want that that quality then you're going to have to buy that sort of stuff the other thing I have used and used successfully is this border and overlap adhesive. Again, this is another cheap one from B&Q, lots of different makes. But when using that, I realised it's very probably the same glue that you get in the ordinary tacky glue that anybody who does any sort of craft work probably uses all the time. So most of you would be familiar with some sort of tacky glue. I can't think what it is and I have looked on both bottles, both containers to see if they tell me what they are but no they don't and I keep wanting to say PVC and UPVC but it's none of those. Uh, but basically you're familiar with this white tacky glue that dries clear and it's flexible. It never really goes hard. It's always slightly rubberized, a bit flexible, but it does most jobs around doll housing, about around the doll housing hobby. And because of that, I've often got one or two of them finished or finishing. So I've either got an empty one, one that feels empty, or one that's nearly empty. And I quite often can't be bothered getting the last little bit out of them because by the time you're down to about this much even though I keep them upside down in fact I'll show you I've got some wood glue upside down over there I always keep my glues upside down in some sort of pot or cup or beaker so that they're ready to go when I want them but even with that even with it being upside down by the time I get down to about this sort of level in there it's a nightmare to get out so quite often I've got uh, quite a lot of waste going on with this glue so all I do when I come to do some wallpapering or something where I'm going to use a lot of paper glue is I take the empty container or nearly empty container cut it across the middle with a sharp knife and scoop out its innards you would be astonished how much glue you get out of an empty container um, I have got a, a nice little spoon that I can do this with because this is smaller than a teaspoon. But whatever you can find that you can get into this and get around it and scrape it out. And I scrape that out into some sort of a dish, it doesn't matter what. And then I add some water and I mix it up really, really well. And when I've got it to the mix that I want, I then put it inside one of these little jump pots that I use for all kinds of things they are just brilliant these are like those little jumps you get in hotels and gift packs and whatever and they're marvellous for all sorts of things but but for this great because it's going to keep the air out of it to some extent and will make it usable for quite a long time also if I come back to it and it's stiffened up a little bit if it's gone if it's going back to thick again I just add a little bit more water and stir it in really really well when it comes to how much water, it, it isn't critical, it really isn't. Just 
mix it to the consistency that you think is going to be okay for using a brush on the back of your paper. I mean, I'd say that was sort of like thin cream myself, but whatever it is that you reckon is going to work for you. Don't be too fussy about it, it will be fine. Don't overwater it, not because it won't stick, it will. It, it'll stick if you take it all the way down to almost nothingness, but you're going to end up with soggy wallpaper, um, which is what we're trying to avoid by using this. So this does a couple of things for you. One, it's, it's frugal. It gets rid of all your leftovers. And the other thing that I like it for is that it's not going to make my wallpaper ringing wet when I'm trying to hang it because that can give you all kinds of issues. It can, if, depending on the quality of your paper, but your paper can actually tear. And more often than not, the, the water is coming through to the surface, the wet part of your glue is coming through to the surface. And when you're rubbing it down with a cloth, they can often damage the surface of your wallpaper. So I like this because it stays where it's supposed to stay. It's not soaking your wallpaper. You're not going to get bubbles and creases and problems that come with very wet paper.